Welcome to part two of our series called Introduction to Surf Fishing. Today we're going to talk about fish identification and regulations and we're going to show you some of the most common fish that you're going to catch while you're out on the beach so that you know how to identify them right away. I'll give you a heads up, there's a lot of different fish that you can catch on the beach and we didn't even touch all of the different species but we did put together a whole bunch of them. So this may be a little bit longer video than normal, but you're gonna wanna watch all of it. I recorded this series a few years ago for our private ladies group as a whole course called Introduction to Surf Fishing. It was broken up into lots of modules with different topics and things. We're condensing all of this into three parts. Last part, uh, if you didn't watch it, it was about uh, what is surf fishing? Why are so many people gravitating to it? Um, if you haven't watched that yet, talked about how expensive it can be or not be. If you haven't watched that, that's part one. This is part two, we're talking about fish ID and regulations. Very, very important to know your fish identification and regulations. We wanted to release this information to the public now because I meet so many people who are wanting to start learning surf fishing and they don't know where to start or maybe they try it, they go out to the beach and they don't catch anything. So this is just one series that I put together. We're gonna put more series out and it's just helpful information to help you as someone who is just starting to do surf fishing to catch the fish that you're wanting to get on. So if you're more experienced with surf fishing, you might find this information to be quite basic and that's okay because this video is meant to be really basic for the person who has not really done very much surf fishing before. If that's you and you're just starting out, this video is for you. I hope you find it helpful. If you can, push a like, leave a comment. Let us know if it's been helping you. If you're wanting to get a jump start on your surf fishing training, why don't you consider booking a charter with me? Let's come down to the beach, do some fishing. I provide all the equipment and the bait. You just bring what you would bring to have a fun time at the beach. Let's go fishing. And now let's get into part two of our course, Introduction to Surf Fishing. I believe one of the most important things you need to do before you start fishing is to do your research about fish identification and to know what your state requires when it comes to certain fish and how many you can keep, uh, what length they need to be, and all of those different things. So we're gonna talk about that right now. We spend a lot of time preparing for fishing, getting our rigs ready, finding the right poles, buying all the equipment, looking at videos, trying to figure out where we should fish, uh, what area we should be, what the waves look like, that what the water temperature needs to be, all of these different things. We pour our time and energy in and fishing, but when you get that fish on the line and you reel it in, what happens if you don't know what kind of fish that is? What if you don't know what the regulations are for that fish in your state? Every state has their own regulations for uh, what length they need to be, for what the bag limit is. That means how many fish you're allowed to keep of that type for that day. And other regulations that you need to be aware of. So what you'll need to do is usually at your uh, in florida here it's the fish and wild florida fish and wildlife commission the fwc every state has their own fish and wildlife or whatever it's called department that regulates how many fish you're allowed to keep pay attention to if that fish is the full length of the fish or if it's to the fork there might be other regulations that have to be met in order for you to, to keep that fish. But pay attention to the regulations in your state, pay attention to fish identification. Just go online and find, uh, look up common fish, common saltwater fish in the area that you're in so that you can see what these fish look like, find out their identifying features. Please don't keep fish that you're not allowed to keep. And if, if it's really close, for instance, when I catch a pompano, I know that it's 11 inches to the fork, but I might only keep them if they're 11 and a half inches because what happens is once you, if you gut them, um, you gill them and gut them, put them in the freezer, they tend to shrink a little bit. So it's gonna be, if someone checks your cooler, it might look like it's, if you caught it and it's 11 inches exactly, 
by the time it freezes or it gets cooled down, that fish may be under 11 and you could get fined. So you just want to stay away from fines. You want to keep the fish population healthy. Don't keep fish that are too small for a reason. It's for a reason because these baby fish need to grow up. The breeder fish, the bigger ones, need to keep laying eggs and repopulating the, the oceans with, with all of the fish. So you want to pay attention to all of those things and make sure that you're staying in those guidelines. So what I want to talk to you now is all about the types of fish that you can catch from the beach. So I'm going to tell you about these fish, but I'm also going to be showing you pictures throughout the video so you can see what these fish look like. Um, for instance, with whiting, there's three different types of whiting. So I want to show you the different types. I've caught all three of them. There's some very distinct differences that you'll, if you know them right away, you can, when you're pulling that fish in, you can tell what fish it is just by some distinctive markings. One of the most common species of fish that you're gonna catch, especially if you're up here in Northeast Florida, along the East Coast, we get whiting year round here. Whiting are an amazing fish to eat. They're, they give you a good little fight if they're, especially if they're larger, uh, largest whiting that I've caught has been 17 inches. I've heard they get up to 18 or 19, but um, when I was pulling in those 17 inch whiting, that was, that was a pretty good fight. It was, it was really fun. <laughs> what I typically use for a rig is about the same thing as what I use for a pompano. So I'm going to be using either fresh dead shrimp or if I have shrimp that's been left over and I had too many on a trip, then I'll salt them. And then I can bring them back later on to the beach and I use that salted shrimp and that has produced some good fish for me too. But whiting, there's three different kinds. There's the, they also call them kingfish. We have the gulf kingfish. They're very silvery color. They have like a little black tip on the end of their tail, a little on the top of their tail is a little about black mark. Then you have the southern kingfish. I tend to catch a lot of these here where we are, and those have kind of um, like striped colors on them. They're kind of Especially as they die, the, the coloration gets darker. So you'll see that they look darker and they have kind of some bands on them, but they're not like super distinctive like the northern kingfish. Northern kingfish have very uh, defined stripes and markings on them. So uh, they also, the northern kingfish, have some teeth. So you want to be careful when you're catching them. You don't want to get your fingers near the mouth. The gulf kingfish is what we see most often here and I catch a lot of southern. Up in my, uh, up in Jacksonville area, I have friends who catch a lot of the northern kingfish. I know up in the Carolinas, they catch a lot of the northern kingfish. So the next fish I want to talk about is one that everyone loves to catch here in Florida. You just hear people gearing up for pompano season. And so pompano, they're really, really fun to catch. They're fast fish. They slice back and forth through the water. Um, you can tell when you've got them on the line because you can just feel the line going back and forth. They don't stay in one spot as you're reeling them in. They're, they're cutting back and forth. And especially as they get up into the, uh, what I call the wash, which is what you see the white wash right up near the edge of the shore, those fish can easily pop off your line if you're not keeping tension on your line when you're reeling them in. But pompano, they taste amazing. I've made pompano ceviche. I've made um, fish tacos from them. I've just grilled them. You can even just put them on the grill because they're more of a, they, they don't flake as easily as fish do like whiting or flounder. Or they're really flaky fish. But there's so many different things and ways that you can prepare them and cook them. They're fun to catch and they're one of the most delicious fish that you can catch from the beach. Another thing about pompano though is they are a seasonal fish. You're only going to find them when the waters are a certain temperature. So from about when it is around I think 68 degrees to about 77, 78 degrees. Now I have caught them recently and we are in the 80s right now. So right now here is it's 83 degrees. Um, I think that's the temperature that it was when I caught one of, uh, last week. I caught a uh, almost 13 inch pompano and I was kind of surprised that it was still here because I had assumed that most of them have moved north. They're, they're catching them up in the Carolinas, the big ones now. So we do have residential pompano here. 
that stay year round, but most of those are smaller. They're gonna be a lot smaller. There's another fish that's related to um, pompano. They're called palometta. And I've caught one just last week. It's another fish that we catch here a lot. And those, um, to me, they taste very similar to pompano. So the way that you can tell the difference between the pompano and the palometta, the palometta has the same body shape, kind of a flatter, wider shape. But they also have, um, their, their fins are a lot longer on the, their um, anal and dorsal fins and their um, tail fins are longer and they're dark, very dark looking. The palometta also have little stripes, kind of like down, the silvery stripes down their, their sides. You'll see that too. Fish that you're gonna also catch very commonly are called croaker. And these are not fish, I mean, if you get them big enough, you can probably eat them. Most people will keep the smaller ones around for bait. I've got a few with me to use for bait, usually when I'm going after larger species of fish because they're a good bait fish to use. Now, croaker, they're kind of like a beige and tan color. They've got some, uh, their gill plates are very serrated, so when you're holding them, you wanna be really careful to keep your fingers away from those serrated gill plates. I believe it's why they were named croaker because they make kind of a, a croak, like a noise. You, when you put them up to you, you can hear them like making all kind of noise. Another common fish you're gonna catch is spotfish. Now these are similar looking to the croaker. They've got kind of a wide body on the, between their back and their, their um, anal fins, but they have a distinctive little dark spot and they've got some stripes on their back. Another fish that is common to this area where we live is bluefish. And these fish are fun to catch because they are more of a predatory fish. They have teeth, so you've got to really watch out. They might tear up your line. I've noticed that after I catch a bluefish, sometimes if I'm not careful and looking at my line, there is some fraying that's happening and I didn't realize it. And then the next time I go to catch something, if there's too much pressure on that line, it'll snap and then I'll notice that I've lost my sinker and maybe my bottom hook because the teeth of the bluefish have serrated, you know, they have these sharp teeth and they have messed up my lines. So check your line after you catch a bluefish. But another thing about bluefish, they are very oily fish. They're also um, one of those fish that people consider to be trash fish. I eat them. If you bleed them right away and then you cut out that bloodline when you fillet them, you shouldn't have any problem. The meat is pretty good and it's not white. It's kind of a bluish color and that's why they call them bluefish. And that might turn some people away because they don't know about eating meat that has kind of a bluish tint to it, but they're delicious to eat if you prepare them right. And they're also very fun to catch because they put up a nice little fight. The next fish that you might catch a lot, especially in the summertime, is ladyfish. So the ladyfish is a very long fish. Ladyfish are fun to catch as well. Now ladyfish meat is kind of mushy, so people use them as a bait for redfish. And if they use them for cooking, I've seen people spoon out the meat. Honestly, it's so um, tender that you can like spoon it out and then people cook it up and they use it for things like, like you would do for like a tuna salad or something like that. But that's the type of consistency the meat is. So, but ladyfish are fun. They have very big eyes. They're very long and skinny and they have huge eyes. They always look like they're terrified to me. But ladyfish are also fun to catch. Another fish that is a very desirable species to catch from the beach, and people can commonly catch them if they have the right setup, they have the right bait, and they know what they're doing, is redfish. And a lot of people catch redfish inshore, and those redfish tend to look very golden in color because they're in, they're spending most of their time, most of their lives in the rivers and um, in those darker colored waters. When you catch redfish from the beach, they're still gonna have that distinguishing black spot on the base of their tail, but they're gonna be more of a silvery color because they've lived most of their life in the ocean and so their colors have adapted for the beach living, for the ocean. But 
Redfish are amazing to eat. They really fight a lot. They are a slot fish, so you have to pay attention to how big they have to be to keep. If there's over a certain number of inches, they have to go back in the water. And you gotta really be careful. If you're catching a very big redfish, those fish can get taxed from the fight very easily. So there's certain ways that you need to release them properly and certain processes that you might even have to do to make sure that that fish is going to survive and not just swim off and die somewhere. So pay attention to those type of things. And if you're not sure what I'm talking about, look that up, how to properly release a bull redfish after a long fight. So when it comes to one of the most desirable types of fish that you could ever want from the beach, that would be flounder, at least for me. Uh, flounder, if you've seen the prices of flounder in the stores, you're looking at probably 30 or more dollars per pound. And knowing that you can catch flounder right off the beach is a huge win. So the thing with flounder is they're going to be right on this little lip here. I don't know if you can see behind me as the waves are coming in. We're getting to a high tide. It's an incoming tide right now. So the flounder are gonna be in this area, especially on a day like today when it's really calm and really, this is when you wanna throw artificial lures right here up close near the beach because the flounder, the sea trout, the uh, maybe earlier in the day, it's starting to get too hot. So they might be moving out to cooler waters now, but this is where they're gonna congregate, right at that little lip where the, the tide is coming in, where, where the, the waves come right up onto the beach. Just past that is where you're gonna throw an artificial, like a jig that will bounce along the bottom. And it's something that they're gonna wanna snag because they're gonna think it's, it's food, a food source. Another fish you can catch from the surf is black drum. And black drum are good to eat. They are a slot fish, so you do have to make sure that you know the regulations. You know, especially for the state that you're in, how many can you keep and what size are you able to take home? Because what that means when you have a slot fish is if it's below a certain size or if it's above a certain size, it goes back in the water. They are good to eat if they're within that slot. I've heard that when they get over the slot size where you can't keep them anyways, they tend to be kind of wormy. So you probably don't want to keep them anyways. Another fish that is really fun to catch off the beach is speckled sea trout. And I have found myself being able to catch those. They're starting to catch them now. It's just recently the, the water temperature is high enough that they're here. So the technique that you're gonna use to catch those is with artificial bait normally, or if you have like on a conditions like today, if you use a float rig with a live shrimp, hanging off of there, they might come along and snag that. But speckled sea trout are so much fun to catch and they're so good to eat. My personal best is a 17 inch one right off the beach here. And I was able to take that home, cook it up the same day, it was delicious. Another fish that people like to catch right off the beach is Spanish mackerel. And a lot of times they catch them off the pier. These guys will catch tons of them all day long. And uh, this, this uh, Spanish mackerel, they swim fast, they hit hard, they've got lots of teeth, so you gotta watch out for that. But they're a lot of fun to catch off the surf too. If you spend any amount of time out here fishing on the beach, sooner or later you're gonna catch a catfish, probably sooner than later because catfish roam the ocean, they look for things to eat, and they are probably one of the first things that you're gonna end up catching, especially if the water is dirty. And we're gonna cover what uh, the water looks like in another course, so pay attention for um, the water conditions, and if it's dirty water, you may end up catching catfish but that doesn't mean it has to be a bad thing. Catfish are fun to catch. They put up a really good fight. Um, there's two different kinds that you're gonna typically catch. There is the hardhead catfish, hardhead saltwater catfish, and there's also the gaff top sail catfish. And you can tell the difference. The hardhead has kind of a flat, um, they're more of like a tan, gray, yellowy color, but they've got a tan, uh, a flat, top on their, on their head. It just kind of slopes down really, really gradually. The gaff's top sail has a very long fin that comes off the top. Their dorsal fin just kind of comes off real long. 
And so you can tell that that is, and plus their, their pectoral fins come out really far. Now with either one of these kinds of fish, you have to be very cautious when you're taking them off the hook. They do have barbs, spikes, that come out of their, their dorsal fin and from their pectoral fins on the side. So if you're not careful, you can get spiked by those fish. So when it comes to catching sharks or stingrays, things of those, those type of species of fish on the beach, it's gonna be a given. You're gonna catch a shark, even if it's a small little bonnet head or Atlantic sharp-nosed shark, you will end up catching a shark eventually. The species of shark that you catch, you can actually take home and eat if you know how to fillet them properly and if you know which species are allowed to be harvested and which ones are not. What you need to do though is to first of all get a shark fishing license. Now this is free in the state of Florida and I'm going to put the website up here on the screen so that you know where to go. If you have a saltwater fishing license already, you can apply for the shark fishing license and it takes you through a little course which is really helpful actually. It shows you different um, sharks, helps you identify them, it tells you what to look out for and just about a lot of information about sharks and about shark fishing. But to be able to keep a shark you have to have that little license from that free course. So I encourage you, even if you're not targeting shark, you should have that course. And uh, we've actually brought home a couple of smaller bonnet heads and filleted them and eaten them. And it was really very good, actually. So this is another way that you can save on groceries is by eating sharks. <laughs> Now, when it comes to stingrays, you've got to make sure that you're very safe. You've got to watch out for that barb on their tail because they flip it around and they want to sting you. So you've got to be really careful of it. Turn that thing upside down and make sure that you are either putting a towel around their tail or something to hold it down. You can even step on their tail so that you're not going to get stuck with that barb. Well, that's a wrap for part two of our series, Introduction to Surf Fishing. Thank you so much for watching. If that was helpful, leave a comment, leave a like, let us know uh, maybe if there's a fish that we missed that we should have talked about. Uh, let us know if there's a regulation that changed since I made this, I actually made this a couple years ago. So there may be a few things that changed. I try to get that on the screen if I've noticed that it's changed and different but we will um, we'll get that changed up or at least add that information into the description. Stay tuned for part three, our final installment of Introduction to Surf Fishing, where we're gonna talk about what to wear and how to stay safe. So head on over to our website, fishing-girl.com, that's fishing without the G. And we've got our float rigs, we've got our pompano rigs. People have been buying those a lot this year. They're catching a lot of fish on them. I'm getting lots of great feedback of all the fish that you guys are out there catching on our rigs. We've also got our new Sputniks with our Fish and Girl branded colors, the black and the pink and the clear, three and four and five ounce sinkers. So get a hold of those. Um, they're made by Redfin Fishing and they are awesome. But on our website, we've got t-shirts, we've got uh, we've got earrings, we've got all kinds of stuff there, tank tops that you can purchase and enhance your fishing experience. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're new to surf fishing, you want to get a jump start on your learning and your experience, let's get fishing, let's book a charter. Go ahead and contact me. My information again is on the screen and let's get something on the schedule and get you fishing and catching some awesome fish. But as always, tight lines, God bless, and we'll see you. I recorded this series a few years ago. Blah, 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 blah. I recorded this series a few years ago when, hmm. It's not so specific to women because we're talking about fish identification and the types of fish you're gonna catch. So if you're a man, that's okay. This sounds dumb. <laughs> oh my gosh.